All right, I want to do a quick tutorial on FM algorithms in the Kurzweil K2700. Uh, if you're like me and you had a DX7 in the 80s, you may have been horrified by all those pictures on the front panel. And uh, frankly, I never knew what any of them actually meant, uh, which is too bad because I think if I understood it at the time, I could have really gotten into programming. As it was, I just had some menu books and I painstakingly entered in parameters and I waited until the end to hear what I what I had created but I had no idea what all those little number tweaks were doing but now with the way the K27 has it laid out it actually makes a lot more sense to me so let's go ahead and see what's happening behind this particular patch so we're, what we're listening to is the ePiano one <laughs> familiar sound let's see what's happening under the hood here I'm gonna click edit and then I'm gonna page over to the FM main page all right you may recognize this little series of boxes this is an algorithm layout and this is what was so prominently displayed on the front panel of the DX7 and I am now going to demystify what you're actually seeing here okay the quick tip here is when you're looking at an algorithm anything on the bottom row those are what you're directly hearing. So right now, I'm hearing a combination of algorithms one, three, and five. So think about them as uh, different oscillators. So oscillator one, three, and five. These are just sine waves. Now operators two, four, and six are what is called a modulator. And those are actually modulating the operators below them. So operator two is modulating operator one. So and these are all sine waves. Operator four is modulating operator three, and six is modulating five, and so forth. So let's take a look at listening to these individual operators and then see what happens when we start adding them together. So here's another trick. If you want to start muting the different operators in an algorithm, you don't have to go and start turning the volume down on the level. You can actually press multi, and multi will allow you to mute different operators. So let's mute everything but operator one. So right now we're only hearing one. And if I'm correct, we're basically gonna hear a sine wave. Okay, perfect. So that's a sine wave with a little envelope on it. So you can hear the some decay on there. Now let's hear what happens when we modulate it with operator two. All right, that's where you're starting to get some of that bell-like sound. Let's click exit and play with that a little bit. We go down, we can see operator one is at, uh, at, at 99, which is the top level. Now operator two is at 58. Let's start playing around with that level and see how that affects. If we turn this all the way down, you're gonna hear that sine wave. Now as I turn it up, you're gonna hear more of that kind of bell sound. All right, now let's go over here to the frequency. Now this is how fast that sine wave is playing so what is the sort of frequency of that sine wave right now it's pretty high let's bring that down to about half of where it is now that's starting to sound more like marimba like oh interesting okay let's go back to our algorithm page now i'm going to mute one and two let's listen to three again sine wave now, if we click on four, what's four doing? Whoa. All right, let's exit there. Take a look. Four is all the way up. Well, almost 89. You can see it's at a frequency of one. Let's bring it up an octave. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, a square wave. Let's bring it down a bit. Nothing. Up way high. Completely annoying and so forth. Let's leave it down at two. Now yeah, let's go back down to one. Okay, now let's combine our one and our two with what we're hearing there. Interesting, but not exactly exciting. All right, now let's take a look and see what's happening on five and six. I'm gonna bring in five. thicker. Let's bring in six. All right, let's take a look at that one. Let's bring down five all the way. 
or halfway or so. Not too exciting. sound like the regular piano, it's because I have this way up high. Back to where it was at the beginning. So if you if you liked that uh, sort of quintessential DX7 E piano sound, but you always thought it was too bell-like, you can actually go to this second operator, which is creating that harmonic. Turn that down so it's not so obnoxious. down so it's not so high. So you can play around with it like that. Now if we go to the FM operator page you can see here we're looking at operator 2 and I can look at operator 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so forth and you can see where there is a detune option. This is where you start to get into some of that sort of chorus like sound. So Operator 1 has a detune of plus 3. Operator 2 is 0. 3 is 0. So that against the 1 is creating a bit of a chorus. And ah, negative 7 on the 5. That is again creating some more chorus. Remember when we brought that one in and it sounded a bit thicker? What if we brought this up to 0? It's going to sound a little more sterile. <laughs> You kind of get the idea here and how algorithms work. Now, you may also notice here on six, there is this little feedback loop uh, and that allows an operator to feed back to itself. And there's only one of those in any given algorithm. So let's say I just change this to six, seven, eight. There's only one feedback loop. It does, you can't feed back on every oscillator or every operator rather. So let's go back to five here. Now, where do you adjust the feedback level of that? That is going to go ahead and be in the FM layer. And you can see here on this particular patch, the feedback is set to 6, which is pretty high. You could go to 7, or you go down to 0. Turn it all the way up. Gives it a little bit more of a, a bell-like sound. All right, I'm going to go ahead and exit this particular algorithm. I don't want to say that. Now, let's take a look at the famed E organ patch. All right, what's happening here? If you look at it, page over, FM main. And all right, this is algorithm 32, and this is basically an what you call an additive synth algorithm. So think of a sort of like a Hammond organ or any kind of pipe organ where you are just stacking different sounds on top of each other. So in this case, there's no, uh, there's no modulators. It's all carriers. So you're hearing every single oscillator here. I keep saying oscillator. I, I think it's a proper term, but it's really operator. So you're hearing every operator here from one to six. And let's go ahead and start muting some of these and seeing what happens when we bring them in. So one, okay, sine wave. Two, all right, sounds like we've pulled out another draw bar, basically. Three, same thing. Four, so you can see what we're doing here. We're pulling draw bars out on an organ. And five. And let's take a look at six. This is where it gets interesting. Ooh. Take a look at six. So six is really the uh, the percussion that we're hearing here. And I'm not going to get into envelopes in this tutorial, but you can actually see in six, which is what I love about this interface, you can see the envelope right here, and it's very quick. So that is our attack. So if I want to change this, let's say three actually corresponds nicely to the third uh, third harmonic on a Hammond organ. I want to turn that down to two. It actually corresponds nicely to the second. Uh, 
and so forth. So that's kind of cool. Now if I wanted to turn that down. All right, let's see what's happening with these operators. All right, this is six. I'm not really interested in that yet, but let's look at the tuning. Five is a plus two on the detune. Four is a plus five, plus four, minus six, minus two. So the reason those are set that way is to give it a little bit of a chorus. You can kind of hear that. So that's why those are set that way. Let's go back to the, uh, the main. So that is what that type of algorithm does. Now, if we scroll through the way the algorithms are shaped, remember we talked about how the bottom row is always what you're actually hearing. That's 32. Let's just kind of randomly look at them. All right, here is another stacked, um, what we would call sort of a stacked algorithm. And you've got one and three is what you're hearing here. Oh, that's horrible. So this is another thing. If you just start changing algorithms and patches, you're going to be lucky if you get something usable. I mean, every once in a while you might, but it's, it's luck. Okay. Another stacked, stacked, stacked. This is standard stacked. Now, okay. So now this is another one where you have a bunch of modulators feeding all into the same carrier. Again, crappy sounding until you really start to set it properly. Um, then you have another here. And you can start to see where you have different combinations. And it's a matter of finding the ones that work for the type of timbre that you're looking for. So if you're looking for a horn or an organ or a piano, you need to really find the right algorithm to start with. But I think for purposes of playing around, 32 is a great one to just start feeling out envelopes and different uh, operators and frequencies. And then some of the earlier ones, like we looked at earlier, five is a great one. Four is another good one. So you have two that you're hearing with double modulators on each. So a lot to play around with there. Now, the nice thing with the Kurzweil is, like uh, sort of a TX816, you can combine different FM layers. So let's, let's do this. I'm not going to save that. We've got, let's do this fun. We'll have a little fun here. So, we've got the piano sound. It's not quite, quite thick enough. So, let's go into edit. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to the FM layer page. And I'm going to detune that by, say, 7. I can't really hear much of a difference because it's tuning with itself. But let's do this. Let's page over. And I'm going to duplicate the layer. So now we get two layers of piano going, and you can see I'm on layer two. So I'm going to actually turn this one up to plus seven. And that should give us a much fatter sound. Oh, yeah, can you hear that? All right, now on this particular layer, let's get rid of that. Let me turn this down. There's too much bell going on. All right, it's enough, not as obnoxious. That's a little bit better. And you can keep sort of stacking those on top of each other. After a while, it gets to be diminishing returns, and you get to have too much chorus. I think three is nice. You get one in the middle, and then you detune uh, one, and you tune another one up. Uh, and that's kind of a nice combo to get a really fat chorus. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of algorithms on the K2700. And you can see, I think the importance here is the way they've set up the UI is it's really quick to go in and mute different operators. You can go in and you can um, alter the frequency and the level um, and really start to play around and understand the relationship between those things and why pictures are so important. If I didn't have that picture, I wouldn't know that one, three, and five or the three that I'm actually hearing. Um, so I think it's very important as you as you start to look at this. And uh, next up, I'm gonna start talking a little bit more about the, uh, the envelope section, which is over to the right. And uh, hopefully we'll start talking about the level scaling, which I think is also another great feature, which makes those FM sounds so dynamic. So I hope this was helpful. And uh, I really encourage you to go ahead and start playing around with this and, and not to be afraid. 
and start you know taking one operator at a time start adding things and listening to how it goes uh, so enjoy and hope to see you soon